I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And today we're going to be talking about the female brain in love. Well, we covered the male brain in love, and so now we're going to look at a woman's brain in love. Margaret's done some research, and she got this from Helen Fisher's book. Yes, my new friend Helen Fisher. And we're going to be talking about some of the research she came across. Yes. Much of the psychological literature reports that both sexes feel passionate romantic love with roughly the same intensity. Mm -hmm. I suspect this is true. Their responses are just somewhat different. For example, um, my questionnaire on passion um, revealed that more American and Japanese women than men reported feeling lighter than air when they were certain that their beloved felt passionately about them. Women also experienced slightly more obsessive thinking about the enamor. And I Interesting. think... Interesting. Yes, absolutely. I'm, I'm a little surprised to hear that. Me too. Women have more obsessive thinking? Yeah. I'm, I'm surprised. Well, you better not bring it up all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was surprised to hear that as well. Our MRI experience also showed ways in which our female subjects responded differently from our male participants. Okay. When woman, women looked at a photo of their beloved, and that was one of the things they did, they had you look at a picture of your beloved person and then tell how you feel. When women looked at their beloved, they tended to show more activity um, in the brain regions associated with motivation and attention. Okay. Parts of the brain that are associated with the processing of emotions. Women also showed activity in some different brain regions, including one associated with retrieval and recall of memories, and some associated with the, att with the attention and the emotion. So you can see what the woman is doing here. She's collecting the information she has on this guy. That's what she's doing, okay? And we don't know how evolved we were at this point to do that. Mm -hmm. But even her gut level evolutionary response mm -hmm. is to kind of sum up how she feels about him and what she knows about him. Interesting. Once again, no one knows what all these results mean. But as you recall memories and register your emotions, you inform yourself about your feelings and assemble information into patterns. Both mm. activities help you make decisions. Okay? Because remember, there's a lot in this decision that could change a woman's life. Sure. Okay? Especially, you know, 100,000 years ago, a woman gets pregnant. There's no... No choices. Yeah, well, not only that, but there's no doctors, there's no hospitals. You're, you're, it could, you, you could easily die in childbirth. Absolutely. Huge numbers of women. I can't dead. imagine what it would have been like back right. then. Right, I can't either. Um, they probably learned to run really fast. Yeah. It seemed that women were assembling the information into patterns. And for millions of years, women needed to make appropriate decisions about a potentially mating partner. Mm -hmm. If an ancestral woman became pregnant during a romance, she was obliged to incubate the em embryo for nine months and then deliver the child. Sure. These were, and remain, metabolically costly, time-consuming, uncomfortable, and physically dangerous tasks. Sure. So, of course, it would be harder to run from a saber-toothed tiger when you were pregnant. That's true. Or from the guy from the, tra from the tribe next door. So that a woman took an enormous chance getting pregnant back there, I would say. Mm -hmm. 
So some of those. So logically, it wouldn't have made any sense. But like, no, no, thanks. <laughs> yeah, no thanks. Yeah, yeah. Some of those men must have had some some way with words to get her to do it. Mm -hmm. Or they made or they made little little cards on stones, like with my chisels. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, okay. These were and remain metabolically costly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. time-consuming and dangerous. Moreover, a woman had to raise her helpless infant through a long childhood and adolescence. Sure, yeah. Now, I don't think you were in it back then for quite as long as you're in it now. They may have wanted to separate at age 10. You think so? <laughs> well, I think the earlier it is that we're talking about, probably mm. the earlier, yeah. I mean, they had to come to physical maturity, sexual maturity, mm. yeah. What a man can see of a woman's assets for bearing and rearing babies, a woman cannot see a man's mate value just by looking. Ah, okay. oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, she must compute a partner's ability to protect and provide. And these gender differences suggest that when a woman gazes at her lover, natural selection has given her specific brain responses to enable her to recall the details and emotions she needs to assess her man. So it was important that she collected those thoughts about whoever it was. Mm -hmm. She has to make a huge decision here. Yeah, certainly a lot bigger than the man's. Yes, oh, absolutely. I mean, the man's decision yeah. is like, hey, this is easy. Yeah, this the, is The easy. only risk he's got is like, uh, you know, Get potentially getting an STD or a club at the back of the head while he's in the middle of his business. Yes, <laughs> um, but if he doesn't want to listen to her for the rest of his thirty-year life on Earth, he better join another tribe. Because mm -hmm. I'm sure you could get. In, I'm sure there was pressure, just from everybody trying to survive. Mm -hmm. As your kid, you go kill it something. Yeah. Yeah. The vicissitudes of rearing helpless infants in a hostile ancestral environment have unquestionably bred into women other mechanisms they use to choose a mate. Sure. Okay. Are we going to talk about that? Yes, we are. All right. In a survey of 800 personal advertisements placed in newspapers and magazines, okay. American women sought partners who offered financial security twice as frequently as men did. Many female doctors, lawyers, and very wealthy women are interested in men with even more money and status than themselves. Yep. In fact, women everywhere in the world are more attracted to partners with education, ambition, wealth, respect, status, and position, mm -hmm. the kind of assets their prehistoric predecessors needed in a parenting partner. Okay. Now, no longer is he in the cave, and does he have a good status in the tribe? This mm -hmm. is a whole other thing, but we still want it. Yeah. As scientists sum this up, men look for sex objects, and women look for success objects. That's true. Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting because I really find that a lot of men are angry and resentful that women want a successful guy, yet they don't think it's any kind of issue or problem that they just want a sex object or that they want a girl who's super attractive. You know what I so mean? So that they're only looking at one thing too. Yeah. Right? It's interesting. I just, I, I wonder why, because I don't hear an outcry of women getting angry and resentful about it. No. Um, yet, it seems like men are just storming the internet angry and hostile over um, that women are choosing successful men. She doesn't think my job is important enough. Or I don't make enough money. I don't make enough He'll, money for She'll her. leave me for somebody else that makes more money. She's just going to go from one guy to the next guy. and Looking for more money. Yep. Um, well, you don't know that. Have you talked to her about that? Yeah. Well, I think that it's um, anger. A well, lot of just anger. And hurt. And, and hurt. hurt. Sure. Well, absolutely. Particularly if there's been a breakup. It couldn't be anything really about me. It must be well, how much money I make. Yeah. 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 You, you very rarely look at them talking about uh, maybe how they ignored them in the relationship or were selfish or self-centered. Or had a or, quick temper or, yeah. 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 It's, it's always, money. yeah. It's external to you. Um, but I think if you really, really interview women with money, all of this stuff is here. 
but I think it's how a man makes her feel to a large extent. I do. Yeah. I do agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Women are also attracted to tall men, perhaps because towering men are more likely to acquire prestige in business and politics and provide more bodily defense. Mm -hmm. Okay? Tall men do better in business. It's been well documented. Yeah. And I think I've heard that every pres presidential race, the taller uh, person won. Really? Yeah. Oh, poor Elizabeth Warren. She's <laughs> tiny. Um, okay. Yeah, that could be. Um, I remember one time when I ran an agency, we had a politician come to visit, and I said to one of my colleagues, do you think he'll win the next election? And she said, yes, he's tall enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was right on. Um, women like men who sit in a carefree position, a sign of dominance, as well sure. as men who are self-confident and assertive. Okay. Um, women are somewhat more likely to choose a long-term partner who is smart. And women respond to men who are well-coordinated, strong, and courageous, as world literature and legend attest. Mm -hmm. Now, she quotes Inanna, the queen of ancient Sumeria. Is, wait, is Inanna related to Rihanna? No, I don't think, oh. I think Inanna is a little older. Oh, okay. Yeah. Inanna, queen Banana? of... Banana? Inanna. Oh, Inanna. Inanna, queen of ancient Sumeria called her beloved, my fearless one, my shining one. In the Song of Songs in the Old Testament, written between 900 and 300 BC, the woman crooned, my love is shining and ruddy. Mm -hmm. He is the tallest in a crowd of 10,000 men. His arms are like rods of gold. His legs are pillars of marble. Mm. Okay. Uh, and in a 19th century poem by an anonymous Somali woman, the poet gushed, You are strong as woven iron. You are poured from Nairobi gold, the first light of dawn and the blazing sun. That's those women's way with words. Mm -hmm. I hope she told the guy she thought all that. Right? But you Meanwhile, can he was probably checking out the girl at the other temple. Yeah, really. Yeah, probably. <laughs> No wonder men's self-respect is more tightly linked to his general status at work and in the community. Yeah. No wonder men are also more likely to jeopardize their health, safety, and spare time to achieve rank. Mm, good point. Men intuitively know that, they, that to attract youthful, healthy, energetic women, they must try to appear fearless, strong as woven iron, and as powerful as the blazing sun. I don't know that men do know that. I don't know if they do they either. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> they do now. They do now. Women also prefer men with distinctive cheekbones and a strong jaw mm -hmm. for another unconscious reason. Masculine cheekbones are, and rugged jawline are built with testosterone. Mm and testosterone suppresses the immune system. Therefore, only exceedingly healthy teenage boys can tolerate the effect of this and build a rugged face. In other words, you have to be extremely healthy to manage your immune system and have enough testosterone left over to get the rugged jaw and rugged wow, face. Wow, isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? I never heard that never before. Never heard it before either. Wow, that's fascinating. Not surprisingly, around the time of monthly ovulation, women become even more interested in men with these signs of testosterone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, now that they can get pregnant, so that they unconsciously seek males with superior genes. You know, I, I have uh, a thought about that. Uh -huh. I would love to see research on how women act when they're ovulating on social media. Oh, wouldn't that be interesting? That I would find fascinating. Yeah, yeah wouldn't that be interesting? You'd have to get... <laughs> That's how my brain thinks. You'd have to, well, it's a great way, but you'd have to figure out how to get the sample. See, that's the hard part. Yeah. That's why we know most of what we know from college students, because we can get them. Mm -hmm. um, It'd be fascinating, it though. It really too, would be. I, I, I have some theories on that, but I, I, would, I would bet that... Um, 
there would be a lot more activity on social media when they're ovulating and they oh, probably bet. don't even know it. They feel warm, fuzzy, and don't even know mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And then they probably respond to men with rugged jawlines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To be expected, all the all the time women are attracted to men who are willing to share their rank, their money, and their position. In fact, women are more pragmatic and realistic when they're in love. Whereas men tend to be either more cynical or more idealistic and altruistic. Mm. What they really are is scared to death. Yeah. The men? Yeah. What are they scared to death about? Trying to find enough food. No. Oh. For, for two mouths now. Perhaps this feminine pragmatism explains why women fall in love more slowly than men do. She's got a much bigger job to do. Well, she's, and she's got to make a much bigger investment. Yeah. She's got to make sure that this is someone that will be right. stable. Right. Right? Well, she's, she's risking her life. I mean, the this. man is literally putting hardly any risk into it. Right. I mean, unless, other than an STD. Yeah. Right? Right. Um, well, biologically, of course. Yeah, biologically, of course. Now, she may have... Um, half the clan who are her brothers and who are going to beat the whatever out of him. That's true. He doesn't do what he needs to do. Yeah. But you can just see there's no comparison in the amount of risk. Absolutely. She risks her very life. Yep. Right. And that's what we have to say about the female brain in love for now. Interesting stuff. We'll Isn't do some it? more. If you guys like this one, leave a comment and let us know and uh, we can look at more research on it. Yep. Um, what was the name of this one, the book? The book is called Why We Love. By Helen Fisher, if you're and interested. And she hasn't yet told me why we love, but she has told me some good stuff. All right. All right. And I'll now we reading. shared it with you. I'll keep reading. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe to support the channel. And of course, when you want to get our help personally, just go to my website, AskCraig.net. Sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. I do email coaching. I do Skype. Margaret is available for Skype coaching. Yes, I am. And if you would like to talk with me, I'd love to talk with you. Just click on Margaret on the top of the website. And remember to join my email newsletter. If you guys want, I could start looking at putting out exclusive content for that. I'm in the works starting to look at that kind of stuff. If you didn't notice, I did send out some emails recently. And I did a promotion where people could get one of the t-shirts that I designed. For the cost, there was no uh, any additional cost on it other than what the company charged to make it. So I know some of you guys ordered that. Um, but that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And we will talk with you soon.